stuff first. Um, we've been a little blocked on new viewer releases for a while due to uh, kind of a uh, uplift related hangover, just you know things that weren't working quite right um, in the world. I think all of those are currently ironed out. We did put out a new uh, maintenance viewer this week for RC. Uh, and that'll probably that's that's mate Dawa. That will probably also be our next full um our our next uh, you know motion to default view well. Um other than that we've got a couple of RCs active. There's the uh key mappings viewer that lets people customize their uh key bindings, uh and the Jelly Dolls viewer which just has some rendering updates for um the jelly dolls that are displayed if if someone is above the complexity threshold that you've set. Um we've got a couple of other project viewers that I th that should be getting fairly close to um getting fairly close to RC status. There's the uh cache update that replaces the VFS with something simpler and uh there's legacy profiles um which I'm not really sure what legacy profiles is honestly. I've got to check on that. Um anyway, I think those are both pretty close to uh RC ready, and um, so those will probably be showing up on a new uh, feature as well. Um, we've got some graphics bug fixes going into Let Me Render number five, um, and uh, so we've been making some good progress on those. There's a handful still active, but uh, probably will be wrapping up LMR uh, in the next you know week or two, and then you know graphics issues going to MR6 or some other appropriate uh, venue. And I think that's it. Oh, okay. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, Euclid, do you know where we are with the AMD blue bug? Well, we're, I think we're fairly convinced it's a driver bug with AMD. Um, the, the only sticky point we have is being you know, unable to reproduce it here, and AMD takes driver bugs through some application they install on your machine, and um, you can't submit unless you can demonstrate the bug on the machine. Uh, I'm sure there's some other way around that, but we haven't figured it out yet. I, you know, and I believe there's the the workaround for the moment is just to stay on an, a previous AMD driver. Uh, yeah, Coffee, if you'd be willing to submit the AMD bug, I can uh, send you a pointer to the to the reporting software.
Um, yeah, Willie, really, I hadn't seen that, but uh, it makes sense that we aren't the only people affected by this bug, and uh, and it sounds like uh, we should try that new driver. Or those who are seeing it can try that new driver and, and give us some feedback in the Jira. And if people are interested, I did do some research on uh, what probably the underlying cause is. The uh, recommended format for uploading on Windows is uh, BTRA, and every other usage um, is typically RGBA. And it seems like they uh, there was a similar bug on NVIDIA five or six years ago where they it swapped to BGRA just for loading textures in the driver and then uh, either forgot or somehow mismanaged the the format switch and so it's the it's it's really effectively a swap of the red and blue channels I think we're looking at that uh, patch anyway, so we may have a chance to find out. Oh, tell me, are you there? Yeah, that hasn't been integrated in yet, but more information on uh, what machines are demonstrating this bug, then we can then we can see if this actually does fix it. The hard part right now is just reproducing this. I tried on my 5600 XT, it doesn't reproduce, and my RX 580, and I wasn't seeing it either, so uh, I'll try with this new driver and see if that does it as well, but not seeing it on the true test hard. Okay, cool.
Apparently he hasn't suffered enough already. LL telemetry stuff. Um, let's see. I'm not sure where that is. I think we. I think we can only release like a stub publicly since it's a you know commercial library. Does that sound right? Uh, technically we can release the header file, uh, but the DLL is proprietary, so we can't release that. So. That's of limited use, so unless you actually have a specific Red Games Tools uh, telemetry license, it's really of no use for you, unfortunately. Uh, it's being used internally here, so it technically had no plans to support that outside. The viewer that yeah, has the stub support is in, is that viewer 510? Uh, it was 510 or 525, one of the two. I think it was 525, actually. Okay. Yeah, back would be interesting to see how your experience goes integrating Tracy. So keep us up to date with that. That'd be appreciated. Thank you.
That's pretty cool.
question for the third party devs. Has anyone uh, tried experimenting with uh, Thread Affinity with the viewer and uh, Windows? Yeah, Thread Affinity is uh, locking a thread to a certain core, or core parking is another terminology for it. On consoles it has big wins, uh, Windows less wins, I just wonder if anyone played around with that. Seen any positive or negative benefits? Uh, I've seen no real benefits from doing that. You said none? Yeah, I, I didn't see any benefit for doing that on four different machines. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag, like, uh, with AMD's newer CPUs, the Zen CPUs, they behave best when it can ping-pong a thread between two different cores rapidly. Is that with NUMA or enabled or disabled? Uh, that is with NUMA disabled. Uh, I'm talking their newer design that uses a single I.O. die for memory access. They tend to favor ping-ponging a thread between two different cores uh, to minimize temperature spikes.
You can either confirm or deny Vulcan. <laughs> Yeah, Vulcan is, is something we're interested in, but we do have a serious problem that something like 20% of users can't actually run Vulcan on their machines. So, Does uh, that, a, that include so. uh, users that just haven't updated their driver to a version that supports Vulcan? I think it's mostly people with crummy Intel HD laptops. That makes sense. Well, truly, we can't d distinguish between uh, people that just haven't updated their drivers in five years versus people whose hardware won't ever have a driver. Well, not 100% not at least. Yeah, we could probably dive into that in a bit more detail. The stats we're collecting right now are, are just people who currently have supporting drivers, so... Possible or you may want to it. take the stats data and then build a list of GPUs that actually support Vulkan and then run it past that because like AMD supports it back like 10 years of hardware, 10, 12 years. Yeah, AMD and NVIDIA both uh, have about 10 years worth of hardware, but Intel only goes back to 2017. Um, and we, you know, the, the, the GPUs where we get actual numeric identifiers back, we can categorize ourselves, but, um, in some or many cases, we just get back Intel HD or something like that from the driver string. And then we can't really tell the exact hardware underneath it. Yeah. But my experience with Intel is their hardware support cycle is extremely short. Yeah, that's what we're seeing too. AMD, NVIDIA both got great Vulcan support set 10 years back, but yeah, we're seeing the same thing. Intel's Vulcan support is definitely spotty. Yeah, I guess I'd say more than 20% of those laptops out there are using an integrated GPU. Oh, Tanya, there are actually a number of things you can do to increase uh, the viewer's performance on Mac. Um, like, enabling the multi-threaded OpenGL stack actually helps a lot. Yeah, that's actually on a, one of our bug lists. Uh, yeah, so thank you, Ryan, for getting out to Then us. there's some more interesting optimizations around. They have a... Re their driver is really specific in uh, what it will fast path and what it will stick on the slowest path possible in their code, like down to exact formats. There's no but anything outside of what they document as fast will just go down the slowest path possible. We didn't say that, Naren. We're just aware that we have a lot of users still on old hardware, so we're trying to figure out what the best path going forward is.
I would imagine it's gotten, I mean, there probably would be an uptick with uh, last year, but with the GPU shortages still lingering, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be interesting numbers to see that, that's for sure. Yeah, those GPU shortages, uh, there's sure something feeling that right now. <laughs> yeah, I think we all are. I, I called Sapphire to warranty my GPU, and they said their warranty department can't even get GPUs for three to five months. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly one possible approach that we can say, hey, we're, you know, we've got 18 months to, you know, update your hardware, and if you don't, you're going to have a really bad day. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a tough ask. There's a lot of folks out there who are, you know, working with what they have and don't necessarily have access to more powerful hardware. Um, you know, the people running on kind of serious gamer PCs are... Uh, Probably, probably feel like it's all them, but if you look at the look at the whole distribution of users, there's a whole lot of people who aren't in that. I end up with a lot of users that aren't on serious gamer PCs, and it's it's an interesting experience. Something else just to throw into the mix there too is deferred versus forward plus. So, I mean, there's not just one way to skin this cat, right? There's some options, and you need to be aware of them and do some risk analysis to see pros and cons for this stuff. Yeah, in my opinion, forward plus would be a performance benefit just because of how bandwidth heavy deferred is. Yeah, definitely. And so, especially these older Intel, if they don't have the bandwidth, and yeah, forward plus might be a better way to go for, for, for them. Also, another benefit, forward plus lighting just looks better most of the time. Yeah, the platform, whether it's Windows or Mac, it's not really relevant. What's relevant is just the performance and if it's fast or slow. And unfortunately, we have a lot of users on slower hardware. So the OS really is, it's, we got to try and provide the best experience to them as possible. So getting into arguing cases, which one's slower, I think is kind of pointless. And how about we just all agree that OpenGL is slow and old and needs to die in the corner alone? I think we're all in agreement there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Telling the software to die is easy. Keeping it alive is the tricky part. I mean, some hardware manufacturers just kind of go, it exists and we maybe support it. AMD. They really support it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
quote support. <laughs> yes, th th they break it more often than it works. Weird, bizarre, terrible ways. Oh yeah, they, they did break shaders a few years ago, I remember that. The multiply equals operator just stopped working in JLSL for like six to eight months of driver releases. I, I make it work. I, I'm good at fixing the viewer to work on AMD at this point. It's an exercise in patience. So to summarize, what we have is uh, a few things about performance is minimized draw calls, which wasn't discussed. We have better multi-threading support that we can do. Uh, approaching zero driver overhead, which wasn't discussed, but kind of implied. Vulcan potentially, is that a year and a? Uh, Ford Plus, year and a, and DirectX 12. So we're definitely aware of some different options that we have, and we're just navigating to figure out what the best way to go forward. perhaps an abstracted render that can function on multiple APIs, but th that's kind of like a can of worms. Yeah, pros and cons for that, but yeah, we've been doing a little bit of investigation of that too, so. Anybody have an update on the state of chat lag? I not the person to ask about that. Uh, I know we've we've been occasionally restarting the chat servers to help that, and that seems to help somewhat with uh, the reliability of chat. I I don't have a good handle on them performance issues.
I have experienced the bad part about making the Mac viewer faster. I had people complain at me that their laptops were getting too hot and burning their legs. That was a very weird month. You never know. Some people would probably pay extra for that. Uh, Euclid, have you guys looked into using the Forge Toolkit at all? Um, that may have been on, on one of the big lists at the beginning, but I don't, I don't actually remember much about it, so I, I would say no. Is that open source or uh, is that? Uh, yeah, that's also an open source option. Is that another one of those multiple API thingies? Uh, yeah. Second, there's a few games using it too. It's a bit like Legos to build a game engine, but the rendering side of it is extremely solid. All right, Confetti. Yeah, I, I do remember looking at this one. was using this one. That's right. Yeah, we're uh, about at time, so uh, Betty has other things they want to bring up.
Let us know. Yeah, animation override was probably a little big of a topic for the time we have left. Um, maybe we can chat about it next time, or welcome to Swing By Content Creators, and we can uh, chat about it there. It's a good idea, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's you know discussions of it have come up in various forms, so it's uh, it's definitely worth talking about. I think the viewer currently has a mechanism for kind of a remapping of an ID globally just to change the walk animation several years ago. Could potentially build additional stuff on top of it. I'd have to dig it up. It's literally been like nine or ten years. <laughs> Don't remember exactly where it is now. All right. Yep. Yeah, well, good weekend. Back. Stay safe. Is it Thursday, Niren? Are, are you sure? Are you okay? Niren? Niren? Why are you not on voice, Niren? Because I don't want to. But Niren, how are we supposed to rant at each other when you're not on voice? Well, I am now. It was all <laughs> safe for the after-meeting party. You oh, know that. yes, the after-meeting. We haven't had an after-meeting party in a while. Yeah.